know that you don't feel like you're being listened to by the establishment. I came to GB News because it's the people's channel and I want the audience to have their say on the events of the day. We're dynamic. We do something different. Democracy shows that the wisdom of the nation is in its people. I get to travel to find out what the story is from a personal perspective. The British people aren't fools. We know when we're not being told the full story. We've got to work out how Britain moves forward from this. It's the best country in the world. The establishment had their chance. Now we're here to represent your views. Britain's watching. Britain's watching. Britain's watching. We're proud to be GB News. The People's Channel. Britain's News Channel. Hello, I'm Michelle Jubery, and you can join me every weekday, 6 till 7, on Jubes and Co. You're uh, an inspiration to us all. Click that bit off. Well, you are. You, my, you, you, no. my political ambitions are, those days are gone, I can tell you. She's um, only teasing. Go on. He's probably going to want to lay down now. I'll give him two minutes. <laughs> Let's respectfully disagree. That's what we like Absolutely. on Jubes and Co. Come and join us. GB News, the People's Channel. Michelle Jubery, weekday evenings at 6 o'clock. Start the day with GB News. We catch up on all the big stories you didn't hear the night before. And take a look at what the world's talking about this morning. That's right, Monday to Thursdays from 6 o'clock. It's Breakfast with Eamon and Isabel. Straight after breakfast, join us, Bev Turner and Andrew Pearce. We're going to take you through till noon. We'll be tackling the big topics of the day, including the things that the other channels just won't talk about. If it's happening, it's happening here. Wake up to mornings on GB News. The People's Channel. Britain's News Channel. I'm Simon Evans. Join me on GB News for Headliners at 11pm. What's the scoop? I'll be joined by two of the country's top like, comedians. Yes, yeah, right. As we take a look at tomorrow's newspapers tonight. We're going to get into trouble. If it's a big story, we'll be covering it. Spill some tea on him. There well, we go. But we'll also have some fun. I wouldn't stick up a bank. <laughs> My father didn't love me. So anyway, Headliners every night from 11 on GB News. The People's Channel. Britain's news channel. We've got a brand new lineup every Saturday night on GB News. From 6 pm, I'll give you my unique take on the world today. Then at 7, it's me, Calvin Robinson, with my common sense crusade. New to GB News is the Saturday Five. Five times the opinion. Join us every Saturday from 8 pm as we debate the week's stories. With us four, plus a special guest. And at 9, of course, it's Mark Dolan tonight. Brand new Saturday nights on GB News, Britain's news channel. No spin, no bias, no censorship. I'm Dan Wooten. Tonight, is Queen Nick about to be nicked? Senior SNP members fear Sturgeon's arrest is now imminent as Humza Eustace's deputy and a staunch Sturgeon ally make this admission about her scandal hit party. Probably goes beyond Nicola Sturgeon in terms of perhaps uh, a, a culture that has been allowed to develop at headquarters. Extraordinary. So as the calamitous continuity candidate, should Humza Useless stand down now as First Minister? Former SNP councillor Austin Sheridan takes on political commentators Dan McCroskey and James Melville in The Clash. Also coming up with woke welcome signs for illegal channel migrants in Dover said to be replaced with notices that tell dinghy dwellers they've broken the law. Is Rishi Sunak right to avoid a Tory rebellion by toughening its illegal migration bill to give ministers the power to ignore deportation blocking European judges? My superstar panel give their take in the media buzz. And tonight I'm joined by Dominique Samuels, Adam Brooks and Matthew Laza. Elsewhere tonight, as Extinction Rebellion's low-life mob of greasy champagne socialists prepare to renew their destructive campaign of eco-terrorism this weekend, including the targeting of the London Marathon, I'll explain why the police must end their soft-touch tactics to end this insanity. That's my digest next, also on the way. Vaccine widow Charlene Wright, Charlotte Wright, sorry, triumphed in her tireless fight for justice today as an inquest confirmed her healthy husband Stephen died because of the AstraZeneca jab. I'm going to sit down with Charlotte, who's a good friend of the show, in an exclusive TV interview where she'll take aim at the pharmaceutical giant. That's later this hour. As Camilla's friends break cover, publicly defending her against attacks, including from her own stepson, while she prepares to shine at the coronation, 
Is the Queen consort now King Charles's greatest asset? Well, legendary royal author and journalist Robert Hardman joins me live. Plus, Jim Davidson is here for his rollicking take on the week as he skewers Chris Packham's Extinction Rebellion lovin', weighs up Philip Schofield's future at ITV, and tackles woke Disney's outrageous decision to turn Mickey and Minnie Mouse gay. And is Rishi Sudak finally proving he's the man to stop Slippery Starmer's socialist coalition from hell? That's why they call him Sir Softy. Soft on crime, soft on criminals. The North London suburb of Hornsey and Wood Green's constituency Labour Party has sent out their agenda item saying, get this, that out of four delegates, two must be women, one must be a young member and the other one must be BAME, LGBT or disabled. So Conservative Deputy Chairman Lee Anderson, uh, he's a white man, so he probably wouldn't be uh, allowed in. He's going to be in the studio to explain why Rishi has Labour squirming and he'll give his verdict on the latest 30p Lee diss track. You're not going to want to miss hearing that. As if what you have for tea, who can't stand footballers taking the knee. And as ever, stay tuned. Uh, we're going to have a first look at tomorrow's newspaper front pages hot off the press. A brand new Greatest Britain Union jackass coming up too. This is Dan Wilson tonight. Let's go. You're watching GB News, Britain's news channel. I still believe the most important story in the country today is uh, the total collapse of the SNP and the reputation and the legacy of scheming Sturgeon. So we've got that coming up. But my digest first on why we've got to get tough now on these eco-terrorists. First, though, she's back. The news headlines with Polly Middlehurst. Dan, thank you, and good evening to you. Our top story tonight on GB News. Well, as you've been hearing, Scotland's First Minister, Humza Yousaf, will oversee the SNP's finances after Colin Beatty today resigned as Treasurer as police investigate the party's finances. Mr Beatty is the second person to have been questioned by detectives who are trying to establish how more than £600,000 given in donations and set aside for an independence referendum had been used up. Mr Yousaf has tweeted following the resignation announcement, offering his thanks and adding that the decision has come in the best interests of the party. Well, also in the news today, the Prime Minister has been urging unionists in Northern Ireland to return to Stormont, saying restoring devolved institutions is the best way forward. Rishi Sunak was speaking alongside other world leaders in Belfast today to mark 25 years since the signing of the Good Friday Agreement. They concluded the anniversary with a gala dinner at Hillsborough Castle this evening, where the former Prime Minister Tony Blair praised the people of Northern Ireland. Northern Ireland is a world away today from the Northern Ireland defined by bombs and bullets that I grew up with. So, the people of Northern Ireland are remarkable people. They're people of strong convictions, on occasion stubborn ones, but always redeemed by the qualities of a good heart and a creative mind. The former Prime Minister Tony Blair speaking earlier on this evening. Now, the Scottish Government says it has no option but to take legal action against the UK Minister's block of the Gender Recognition Bill in Scotland. The legislation aims to make it easier for people in Scotland to change their legally recognised gender. Laws Westminster has challenged. MSPs voted in December last year to pass the controversial Gender Recognition Bill by 86 votes to 39. An inquest has ruled the death of a doctor after his AstraZeneca COVID jab was due to unintended complications of the vaccine. 32-year-old Stephen Wright was an NHS psychologist in South East London. He died from a blood clot to the brain 10 days after his first dose of the vaccine in January 2021. Coroner Andrew Harris described it as a very unusual and deeply tragic case. 
And Labour is accusing the government of denying justice to victims of the infected blood scandal. Between 1970 and 1991, thousands of people were infected with HIV and hepatitis after being given contaminated blood products. An interim report, the chair of the inquiry, Sir Brian Lungstuff, recommended that reparations should be extended to include bereaved parents and children. And the Cabinet Office Minister Jeremy Quinn told the Commons today the government is considering that recommendation. And finally, supermarket giant Tesco says it plans to appeal after Lidl won a high court battle over branding. Lidl argued Tesco's use of a yellow circle on its club card was an infringement of their main store logo. A judge found in favour of Lidl, agreeing it was a violation of their trademark rights and copyright. I'm back in an hour. You're watching Britain's News Channel. Back to Dan. The end of the world brigade of champagne socialists are stepping up their destructive campaign of eco-terrorism, uh, more determined than ever to stop hard-working Brits going about their day-to-day -day lives. These losers who need to get a haircut and get a real job claim 30,000 will disrupt the London Marathon at the weekend, one of the capital's proudest traditions. That comes hot on the heels of their interruptions of both the Grand National and the World Snooker Championships. Uh, the orange paint buffoon, there he is, uh, turned out to be Edred Whittingham, a 25-year-old toff, the son of a venture capitalist who's never worked a real day in his own life and should go and get a job at the job centre. Instead, he's already been arrested six times and jailed once, wasting police time as the government waits to pass its public order bill, which Prime Minister Rishi Sunak assures us will stop this madness. And by the way, uh, it's opposed by Labour. And Edred is funded by dopes who are willing to pay him £50 a month via crowdfunding. As I've been campaigning for on this programme for many months, the police must stop treating these criminals with kid gloves. Uh, while I absolutely believe in the right, uh, it's a great British right, really, to peacefully protest, the actions of these groups, like Just Stop Oil and Insulate Britain, easily meet the definition of terrorism and they need to start being policed in that manner. The lunatic fringe is, of course, being encouraged by much of the champagne-swilling tofu-munching establishment who support their illegality. That is obvious at the BBC, where its longtime Spring Watch presenter, Chris Packham, uh, who has been allowed to use social media to urge his followers to join Extinction Rebellion's inevitably unhinged and damaging action in Westminster this weekend. It's the big one. Yes, it's the big one that we've all been waiting for. We can change the world to make it a better place. I'm going to be there on the 22nd. It's Biodiversity Earth Day, chipping in on that account. I hope to see you. It's really important at this time that we all recognise that we all have a role to play in making sure that our planet has a safe and secure and healthy future. So please come along to the big one. Of course, that video uh, goes completely against the British Bashing Corporation's own social media guidance. But after Gary Lineker rendered those rules meaningless, no action will be taken as the government-owned broadcaster gradually morphs into a left-wing campaigning organisation. Now, uh, as a loyal viewer, you know I've had these eco-terrorist fools on the show time and again, not because I want to give them airtime. In fact... I don't very often anymore, but because I think it's crucial to show how ill-informed and hysterical they are and how quickly their arguments fall to pieces. People are not going to allow their children to starve to death quicker because they don't like what Just Stop Oil are doing. There's Action also on the climate no crisis. evidence that we are going to starve Dad, to death. Do you, you believe in personally leading this movement and practising what you preach? So, uh, well, look, Dan, I'm, I lived in social housing, right, mate? And this is the, this is the, this is the point. We right? now live this in quite whole a nice scheme, house, I believe. This, this whole scheme. Well, no, no, Liam, Liam. This, Dan, Liam, Dan, Liam, Dan come let on, me mate. speak and you Dan, respond. You, this, Liam, this thing let is me, not... 
don't you want me to raise this? Because you don't like, want me to raise this because no. you're embarrassed about it. Do you live in quite a posh, nice house in South West London? It's single glazed, has no cav cavity wall insulation, and uses gas central heating. So you're not practicing what you preach at all. Like, the target of your protest has never taken a private jet. So what you're doing actually makes no sense. You could say this is kind of like 1940s Germany right now. No, in terms not. of the You're a group of absolute hypocrites. Most insulate Britain folk haven't even bothered to insulate their own homes. You travel all around the world. You, you drive diesel cars. So actually, you don't practice what you preach, do you? So look, as you can see there, uh, these people are all uniformly clueless idiots. Uh, so the soft touch tactics from the police and the justice system, I think, must end as these groups continue to blackmail the government with a further campaign of eco-terrorism unless they call an immediate halt to all new fossil fuel exploration. To respond now, my superstar panel, the businessman and activist Adam Brooks, the political commentator Dominique Samuels, and the former Labour Party advisor Matthew Laza. Now, Dominique, the problem that I have with this is that they're often breaking the law, but the police are very reluctant to be heavy-handed most of the time. And then once they enter the woke justice system, we've seen judges actually sympathise with them, platform their particular issues. We've seen barristers who say they won't actually uh, represent uh, the other side because mm. they so believe in their cause. And what that does is encourage the criminality to continue. And this is criminality. It's not peaceful protest. It's willful criminal damage. And it all comes with a political threat, which is why, to me, it very clearly meets the definition of terrorism laid out in the Terrorism Act of 2000. Yeah, I think the difficulty with this is that what they're saying is sort of reflected in, you know, many things that the government says about the climate crisis, mm. um, their obsession with net zero, it's sort of become an agreed upon thing that, you know, within the next few years, we're all going to burst into flames. So it's no surprise that our justice system and our political class seem so empathetic um, towards these people and the way they express themselves. I think the issue is... Because it's your point, basically, if, if our sort of officials from the UN down to teachers in classrooms are feeding youngsters this hysterical climate propaganda. Yeah. You can't actually blame them if they start acting hysterically. Exactly, that's my point. We don't actually tackle what they're saying. We're instead saying, oh, but what you're doing is wrong. And my fear, I think, with um, the new bill that uh, targets protests is that, you know, can their behaviour, which is wrong and it's criminal, sort of be used as a Trojan horse so then, down the line, other forms of protests mm. are rendered criminal. I think that is sort of where the legislation yep. no, makes no, no, me uneasy. And I absolutely agree with that, Adam, when it comes to the freedom of speech thing. But look, we've already seen mm. that the police can use existing laws when they want to against people whose protests they don't agree with. Look yep. at what happened over the COVID pandemic. If you were protesting against vaccinations or you were pro or enforced vaccinations mm. by the state or you were protesting against lockdowns, you were immediately locked up. Yep. You were immediately dragged off the street. So to me, it feels like the police do pick and choose which they do. political protests they want to go they're, 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 they're too lenient on these, and, and you're right. I think they're bordering on terrorists. And let's just be sort of truthful here. The majority of the Br British public cannot stand no. these wallies. You know, uh, XR, uh, Extinction Rebellion, Just Stop Oil, Insulate Britain. They're all probably funded by the same people. They're all posh. Uh, prats, really, mm. you know, and they but should... no idea about what it actually... No, means they, don't live, they don't, live, they don't live in the real world, Dan, job. at all. And, you know, I've been on peaceful protests during COVID, vaccine passports, restrictions. I went on probably seven or eight protests during that time. They were all agreed. They were all in line with legislation. We got our point across. We did it peacefully. Yeah. And there is a way to do that. Yeah. I'm, I'm not against protests, but we need to come down hard on these people. Yeah, but that's always been my point. This is not protest. It is eco-terrorism. Uh, Matthew Laza, the public order bill, which Rishi Sunat promises will end all of this, uh, 
Labour, your party, doesn't support. Why? Are you in bed with these eco-terrorists? Absolutely not. Uh, I think that they do uh, what's a very important cause. I mean, those of us who think climate change is real, which is the vast majority of the British people and want to want to tackle it, they, are, um, they couldn't be worse uh, message carriers uh, mm -hmm. for taking it seriously. Every time they throw tomato soup at a painting in the National Gallery, uh, a support uh, for sensible action on climate change decreases. So, um, absolutely not in bed with them. There are problems with the Act. It, it, there are issues, as you say, what, it, it, it is a very real danger becomes a Trojan horse um, uh, just to, to stop other protests. But the police's inconsistency uh, on, on protests, I think, really is an issue. And I think mm. that has been... But, I mean, do you... So, you obviously agree with, you know, climate change being real. I mean, I, I think, obviously, the weather has changed due to, you know, man-made activity. But do you think that the government should make a meaningful statement and come out and, you know, cease any new fossil fuel contracts, which is what they're demanding. That's the crux of their demand. Oh, it's a political oh, demand. Oh, absolutely. I mean, look, I, 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 I don't agree with the uh, d d demands that Insulate Britain uh, and XR make. They're, they're, they're on the extreme end of the debate. Mm. And by, by uh, uh, making it yeah. that extreme, they well, do they cause harm. Exactly. And the reason that this is eco-terrorism to me is there is a political threat, very clear political threat, mm. and they are saying to the government, if you don't immediately do something, we are going to go ahead with criminal activity that puts lives Threats. at risk, yeah. that causes damage, that could kill and injure people, and mm. that's why I think mm. this should be treated as terrorism. We, we shouldn't get into this argument about whether it's about protest, because this isn't protest. It is very clearly breaking the law. But look, Matthew Laza, Adam Brooks, Dominique Samuels, do stand by. My superstar panel will be with me all night. But coming up, as Rishi Sudak brands Slippery Starmer, Sir Softy. Is the PM proving he's the man to keep Labour out of power? Deputy Chairman of the Conservative Party, Lee Anderson. He's going to be with me live in the studio soon. But first in the clash, as former SNP leadership candidate Kate Forbes slams her party for its lack of decisive action following the bombshell arrests, should Humza Useless stand down as First Minister? Uh, SNP supporter Austin Sheridan does battle with political commentators Dan McCroskry and James Melville. But I want to know what you think down at GBNews.UK. Vote in our poll at GB News. The Clash. I joined GB News because I was sick and tired of not hearing my views being represented, not just mine, but so many people that I knew and spoke to. Oh, I just couldn't get my voice out there. I couldn't say anything. I couldn't do anything. Whatever the narrative was, I kind of had to follow it. GB News is there to provide a voice for those who have been ignored by the establishment media. We think different things. We've got a different style. GB News is here to be optimistic and positive about the future. It's real kind of dynamic and flowing with the audience very much at the heart of it, like a big family. Here at GB News, we talk about the things that matter to you. Hearing the voices from right across our towns and cities, especially our towns. All sides of the argument represented with a heavy dose of opinion. We're on a mission here to make a difference. And the GB News family really is here for you and whatever time of day you can watch or listen. Britain's watching. Britain's watching. We're proud to be GB News. The People's Channel. Britain's News Channel. Monday to Thursday, 9pm till 11pm, join me, Dan Wooten. I'll bring you the sharpest takes and hottest debates. Do you okay. not believe in prisons? I, I don't believe in prisons. I'm completely right. stunned. I guarantee you there'll be no spin, no bias, no censorship. I actually was personally quite offended by it. <laughs> and no reason to go to bed. So I guess they've always been quite woke. That's Dan Wooten tonight on TV, radio and online. Monday to Thursday from 9pm till 11pm on GB News. The People's Channel. Britain's news channel. We are GB News, the People's Channel. And right across the United Kingdom. You can find us on Sky Channel 512. Virgin Media Channel 604. Freesat Channel 216. Freeview Channel 236. And UView Channel 236. You can also take us with you on DAB Plus Radio. With the GB News app and at the website gbnews.uk. We're absolutely everywhere. Come join us on GB News, the People's Channel, Britain's news channel. Start the day with GB News. We catch up on all the big stories you didn't hear the night before. And take a look at what the world's talking about this morning. That's right, Monday to Thursdays from 6 o'clock, it's Breakfast with Eamon and Isabel. Straight after breakfast, join us, Bev Turner and Andrew Pearce. We're going to take you through till noon. We'll be tackling the big topics of the day, including the things that the other channels just won't talk about. If it's happening, it's happening here. Wake up to mornings on GB News.
the People's Channel. Britain's News Channel. New to GB News is the Saturday Five. Join us every Saturday from 8pm as we debate the week's stories. Right, folks, that Ooh. was a spicy one, wasn't it? With us four, plus a special guest. Sometimes she has to stick her foot in it. Sometimes she has to say things as they are. Sometimes I think we should keep the refugees and send the pensioners to Rwanda. <laughs> then we'd be in a much better state. Well, Benjamin, yeah. that is that. The Saturday Five. Saturday nights from 8. Only on GB News, the People's Channel. Britain's News Channel. I'm Mark White. As GB News Home and Security Editor, I cover those key issues that are so important to you. Our authorities, our communities doing all they can to combat violent crime. With the public services under unbearable strain, why are we still failing to control our borders? Defence, the first priority of any government, has been continually hollowed out. Can we trust our politicians to protect the armed forces? Join me, Mark White, on GB News. Conservative Party Deputy Chairman Lee Anderson is on the way, but first it's The Clash. And former SNP leadership contender Kate Forbes has launched a stunning takedown of the party's hierarchy. Just hours ago, the National Treasurer Colin Beattie announced he was stepping back from the role after he was arrested as part of the investigation into SNP finances. A fortnight ago, the party's chief executive and Nicola Sturgeon's husband, Peter Murrell, was also arrested as the police search descended on the couple's Glasgow's home. And as Sturgeon is the only senior SNP official named on the party's most recent financial accounts who has not been interviewed under caution, senior members of the SNP fear that her own arrest is now imminent. This is what the leadership contender, she only narrowly lost out to useless, Kate Forbes, has said just minutes ago. They were obviously a very good team in the sense of um, managing the SNP, but there's no question that since then, there have been lots of questions about transparency, the integrity of the systems and structures. And it doesn't matter how slick the optics are, you need good governance. So I suppose you could read into my comments that we are at a pretty critical moment and it'll be the response and the reaction that determines how big a problem this is for the SNP. Continuity won't cut it was the major theme of Forbes' leadership campaign as she battled against Useless, the man groomed by the party's executives to replace Scheming Sturgeon. But with those same senior officials at the SNP now submerged in scandal, should he just step down? as First Minister. I want to know your thoughts on this. Email me, down at gbnews.uk. Tweet me at gbnews. You can vote in our poll there now. But to debate this, I'm joined by the SNP supporter, Austin Sheridan, the political commentator, Dan McCroskey, and the social commentator, James Malville. So, James, where do you stand on this? You used to support the SNP, didn't you? Uh, but I think, given what's going on, you've had a second thought. Yeah, we need to divide this up a bit. I'm still a firm supporter and believer of independence. I'm a believer in freedom for the people, but certainly not freedom for this sort of grubby festival that's going on right now. I've had concerns with the S&P's direction of travel over the last couple of years with some of the draconian responses to COVID and the hate crime bill. But this is off the scale. This is failing the Scottish people. It's like some sort of episode from Succession where the leader steps down and suddenly everyone's trying to accumulate power, but it's done in the right order. And I'm concerned about this. We have to see what happens with the investigation. But there's a lot of unanswered questions there about money that seems to have gone missing. But fundamentally, there's other questions that the Scottish public want answers to. Why, for instance, aspects of crime, education and health care those standards have been slipping for a number of no, years indeed. in Scotland. Indeed, and there's and so is, many issues like about what's going on in Scotland. Us. Of course, James, and there's a lot of issues. Of course, we know the issues. The SNP, in my view, has destroyed Scotland. But in terms of actually this SNP de democratic decision, surely both the party has a right to elect someone knowing what they know now, uh, and you would imagine that wouldn't be a continuity candidate. And actually, surely the Scottish public have a right to go back to the polls. Because I remember uh, the SNP were constantly calling for an election any time there was an issue in the Conservative Party at Westminster any time there was a change in Prime Minister. 
I agree. The SNP also said about the Scottish referendum, which I think should happen for independence, if circumstances changed, and they used the auspices of Brexit as a reason for change. Yeah. Now, circumstances have changed with the Scottish leadership Indeed. election. Indeed, huge change. You know, the current because first, Dan... minister, current first no. minister is in before this whole investigation has happened. Indeed, because the thing is, Dan... Mikoski, is that whom's are useless. I mean, he literally campaigned as the continuity candidate. He was Sturgeon 2.0. Now, the issue is he only won very narrowly. And it feels like that race was hurried up by the party because they knew what was just around the corner. And that is very dishonest. I completely agree, Dan. Uh, it was hurried up. It was uh, done very rapidly. Uh, and a lot of this only came out in the latter stages of the contest, uh, after which point you know, a, a, a vast number of members will have already voted, as we already know, with our, our leadership contests. You know, members vote early, some vote in the middle, and there's a last-minute flurry. But a lot of those members didn't know uh, the scale of what was happening at that point. And even then, they didn't know the sheer scale, uh, which was only revealed uh, thereafter. Um, you know, and uh, James uh, kind of touched on this point uh, about uh, the SNP using this phrase, uh, change in circumstances. I think the, the phrase is exactly a material change in circumstances, which they always describe the EU referendum as. Well, surely this is a material change of circumstance. But I tell you something, like the only people uh, who will want to see, I think, Hamza going, okay, there were a lot of unionists out there who want yeah. to see the back of Hamza yeah. as soon as possible. I, 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 I think I, I, a, lot of people, I, a lot of people will like, give him a year in the job. Uh, yeah. But uh, the people who wouldn't want to see the back of Hamza, minus the SNP Wokarate, uh, will be the people uh, like yeah. me, Conservatives, uh, because he is a gift to us. He is a golden goose okay. to unionism. Dan, yes, I understand what you're saying, but look, I want to allow uh, Austin Sheridan to respond to this, because Austin, look, you stand by your man. You stand by useless. Uh, but don't you feel like this is actually just destroying your own party? Because the SNP members are all quitting, Austin. They feel completely let down. Uh, in, in terms of the, of the leadership election we've just had, I think it's really important to point out that Kate Forbes um, supports Hamza Yusuf's leadership. Um, and Kate Forbes has essentially reiterated... Didn't exactly sound like it just then, Austin. Austin, didn't happen. sound like it just then. Sorry? Well, it didn't sound like it with what she was saying to the BBC. Yeah, no, she does. Um, and she's offered her full support to Hamza's leadership. Oh, um, and on, she Austin. continues to offer that Don't be Hamza's naive. Support. Support. You're a lot of things, Austin, what but do don't be naive. No. So what we need, Dan, is we do need to change the government structures within the SNP. That has to be a priority. Um, and that's what Hamza Yusuf has committed to. But yesterday as well, it is important we got on uh, with the job of government. So things like, you know, um, scrapping um, peak fares uh, in October for, you know, for, um, for Austin, rail travellers. Austin, and Austin, like no one's listening to that. No one's talking about that, no one's talking about that. that. Austin, Austin, do you not understand? No one is listening to useless about this. Everyone is talking about this party being under criminal investigation. And yes. he supported I mean, I mean, the people who were arrested. Dan, there is absolutely no doubt, right? And you won't hear me denying that these are very difficult times for the SP, very difficult to be an SNP member at the moment. I'm not looking to gloss over any of that at all. As you know, there is an ongoing police investigation, and whatever the result of those investigations, I want to see appropriate action taken, regardless of who it is, because... OK, the, the okay SNP awesome. well, look, I want to go back to James on this. Much wider than the individual. James, but James, surely, given what Sturgeon used to say during the Partygate investigation, which, by the way was a misdemeanor compared to what the SNP investigation is about. Surely, at the very least, she should stand down while the investigation goes on, James. Completely agree. I was listening to Austin. With respect, it was like word soup of a party line. I mean, there's a way of <laughs> processing all of this stuff. She should step down. And basically, Hamza should step down as well, have an interim leader, let the mm. dust settle in the investigation and see what happens on the other side. That's proper democracy. And do you know what? The SNP, they're all about supposed freedom for Scotland. Well, the way they're conducting this is anything but freedom apart from trying to incorporate aspects of freedom for their own grubby politics. It's not good enough. And the Scottish people are the ones I am concerned about because they're getting a failed yeah. government with a whiff of corruption they right are. now. And now and it's not just a failed government. Now it's not just a failed government. 
It is also a completely failed party. And that's the issue. It's going to be even worse. But, but look, fast. It's still opinion polls. It's still, I mean, we're still reading. Oh, you just, you just wait. You just wait, Boyo, right? because they're that's going to be going so one way. Let me tell you, they are, tell you, they are going to be going one way down, don't down, down. Last, Dan, look, fi you. final word to you, Dan. Final word to you. Well, I'd I say this. I mean, the, the, since Humza became leader, incidentally, during the leadership context, Humza Yusuf was polling at negative rating. So uh, highly unusual for a new leadership candidate to be polling at a negative rating. Um, but the, the, the SAP old regularly polled at 45%. They're now below 40%. I've never seen them at the, the sort of 38 39% yeah. the polls are less than that. In yeah. some po in some and as I say, they're only going in years. one direction. No, this thank you all so a, much. A, a, big, a big crash is going to happen soon. The next generation is going to be a shock for them. And I think the Scottish yeah. parliamentary election. Well, they're we'll finished. Doing. They're finished. They're completely finished. Uh, look, really great to have this debate, though. Political commentator there, Dan McCroskey, uh, the SNP supporter. He's still back. It's useless. Austin Sheridan and the social commentator, James Melville. But who do you agree with? Should Nicola Sturgeon's chosen successor stand down as First Minister? Buckley on Twitter says no. Keep him in. He is doing a fine job of finishing off the SNP, so let's leave him to get on with it. I mean, I sort of agree. But then I think actually the Scottish people deserve someone who is competent. Uh, from Susan on Twitter, that's a tough one. On the one hand, he should stand down. On the other, we're enjoying seeing him squirm. He's been dropped in it big time. Yeah, but he didn't ask many questions, did he, Susan? He didn't ask many questions because he was so desperate for the job. And from Stephen, also on Twitter, better still, the SNP should stand down and dissolve out of existence. Our United Kingdom is stronger Without them, and your verdict is now in 87% of you agree that Humza Useless should stand down as First Minister. Just 13% say he should continue to lead the nation. Coming up after an inquest finally ruled her husband Stephen died because of the AstraZeneca, to, uh, AstraZeneca vaccine, excuse me. Our vaccine widow, Charlotte Wright, very brave woman, is going to join me live to explain the emotional toll her fight for justice had on her young family. She wants answers from the pharmaceutical giant and the government. So don't miss that TV exclusive very soon. But next is Rishi Sunak, brown, brown slippery star. Mr. Sir Softy is the PM finally finding his feet and showing he's the man to see off Labour at the next general election. Deputy Chairman of the Conservative Party, Lee Anderson, live in the studio straight after the break. Monday to Thursday nights on GB News. At 6, it's Deebs & Co. 7 o'clock, Farage. At 8, join Jacob Rees-Mogg. And at 9, Dan Wooten tonight, followed by headliners. On TV, radio and online, this is GB News. It's all about family. Being in people's living rooms, all the interaction and getting to know who our viewers and listeners are. When I was young, my dad used to say, no, no, stop arguing. I wanted an outlet that would enable me to give my opinion. People are going through a really hard time right now. And I know that you don't feel like you're being listened to by the establishment. I came to GB News because it's the people's channel and I want the audience to have their say on the events of the day. We're dynamic. We do something different. Democracy shows that the wisdom of the nation is in its people. I get to travel to find out what the story is from a personal perspective. The British people aren't fools. We know when we're not being told the full story. We've got to work out how Britain moves forward from this. It's the best country in the world. The establishment had their chance. Now we're here to represent your views. Britain's watching. Britain's watching. Britain's watching. We're proud to be GB News. The People's Channel. Britain's News Channel. Westminster is going around in ever-decreasing circles, followed by the media. Britain is broken. How on earth did we get into this mess? But more importantly, how do we get out of it. Join me at 7pm, Monday to Thursdays on Farage, here on GB News. We will have open, rational debate. We've got to work out how Britain moves forward from this. Join us here on GB News, the people's channel. Britain is watching. I'm Jacob Rees-Mogg, the Member of Parliament for North East Somerset and a former Government Minister. For years I have walked the corridors of power in both Westminster and the City of London. We need to have the arguments, the discussions on how we make it better. 
crop failures, famine, war, suffering on a scale completely unimaginable. We are putting the cart before the horse. As Charles I said of the scaffold, he was the true defender of liberty. Yeah, I've completely derailed the conversation. <laughs> Join me Monday to Thursday at 8pm on GB News, Britain's news channel. GB News has its own late-night paper preview show, Headliners, where comedians take you through the next day's top news stories. You don't have to bother reading the newspaper, we've got it covered for you. Headliners, every night at 11pm and repeated every morning at 5am. We won't send you to sleep like some of the other paper review shows out there. GB News, the people's channel, Britain's news channel. Join me, Camilla Tomini, on Sunday mornings from 9.30, taking the politicians to task and breaking out of SW1 to see how their decisions are affecting you across the UK. Bursting the Westminster bubble every Sunday morning, only on GB News, the People's Channel. Britain's watching. You've probably seen politicians interviewed a thousand times, but we do it differently. We find out who they really are, we don't shout, we chat, and hopefully we bring a bit of light, not just heat. Did you All know Kate Moss? <laughs> Apparently. Uh, <laughs> do you have a pair of jeans or a pair of jeans? <laughs> no, no, of course I don't. What would I do with them? My friends are like, oh my God, what's she doing now? Join me every Sunday at six for Gloria Meets, only on GB News, the People's Channel, Britain's news channel. Time now for Westminster's toughest talking MP, Deputy Chair of the Conservative Party, Lee Anderson. And at PMQs today, Rishi Sunak and Keir Starmer went toe to toe on the issue of crime. And calling out his opponent's shoddy record, the PM gave the Labour leader an apt new nickname. I love this. Look. Are the Prime Minister see that because they've lost control of the court service, yeah. Yeah. because they've created the largest court yeah. backlog on record? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. He's letting violent criminals go free. We toughen the law on sex offenders so they spend longer in prison. He voted against it, Mr Speaker. That's why they call him Sir Softy. Soft on crime, soft on criminals. Do you know what, Lee? I, I, I was watching live. I know you were obviously in the chamber. Yeah. Uh, that definitely was a Sunak win today. Massively. I, mean, I think over the past month or so, Dan, is, is really beginning to shine Rishi is in the chamber. PMQ is absolutely superb today. Um, Keir keeps trying to do a comedy sort of line on each speech he does. It's not working. Um, and like I say, every time he comes out with one of these one-liners, Rishi actually knocked him straight out of the park. He was superb today. I think this Sosofty is going to stick. Um, it was in stitches today. It was... It yeah. was Sosofty, Sosofty. And you know what? Sosofty deserves this because yeah. he started this with the dirty campaign ads. And look, Lee, I actually don't mind yeah. ca dirty campaign ads, no. but the problem is, if you start throwing that sort of mud, you, be you better be prepared to defend your own record. And the problem is, he has a bad track record. And as Sunak pointed out today, it was Emily Thornbury, his own shadow attorney general, who was calling him out when he was the director of the Most GPP. Was, she was sat there today, she was looking quite embarrassed. I think <laughs> the whole, whole front bench the Lampard, was looking embarrassed today. I think Rishi nailed him. Like you say, he brought up his terrible track record when he was the director of public prosecutions. Uh, it's shameful. So, and like you say, Dan, the ads from last week were quite shameful. I'm not bothered, actually, because it does us a favour. It makes him look like a child. It makes him look like a playground bully as well. And it's not working. Well, no, but personally, I don't know how you feel about this, but I also don't think there was anything wrong uh, when Boris Johnson raised the Jimmy Savile thing either, because at the end of the day, he was still at the DPP at that time. Well, look, if you're going to claim credit for all the prosecutions while you're in charge of an organisation, you should be holding your hands up yeah. and apologising for things that didn't go quite so well. And, and especially when he's trying to blame Sunak for things uh, that happened before he was even an MP. Well, there you go. I mean, Sunak's only been there since 2015 and he was director yeah. of public prosecution for, for, for years before. Look, Labour's in more trouble, though, Lee. I mean, I can't imagine what you think of your old party these days. So they're banning straight white males, people like you, from being conference delegates. So this is a North London suburb of Hornsey and Wood Green's <sighs> constituency party, which sent out an agenda item saying that out of four delegates to their conference, two must be women, one must be a young member, 
and one must be either BAME, LGBT or disabled. So basically, if you are a straight white man without a disability, you're not welcome as part of the Labour Party anymore. It's, well, I'm, I was going to say I was shocked, Dan, but this has happened before within the Labour Party. I think they did it at a conference a few years back when I was in the Labour Party. I mean, what sort of message does it send out mm. to, 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 to young white working class boys who are interested in a career in politics or want to get involved with a political party? They're basically sticking two fingers up to, to, to young men, to people like me, and saying you're not welcome. It's shocking in this day and age, this is the Labour Party which was born on the backs of people like me. Meantime, uh, they are trying to describe Superwoman Suala, you know, our brilliant Home Secretary, as a racist bigot. Surely, actually, if there's anyone <sighs> who is practising racism, discrimination, bigotry, it's these woke folk in the Labour Party. I, I, I had a long chat today with, with Suella, uh, uh, and we touched on this, this, this racism slur. It's absolutely disgusting. It's despicable. It's despicable. Super Suella, you know I call her that. I mean, she actually represents everything that I love about our party, Suella. They hate her. They've got nothing on her. Uh, she's a tremendous woman, and, and to keep using this racist slur against her, it's disgusting. Yes. This, this is gutter politics. It yes. really is. And that's what they're clearly going to be practising yep. up until the run, yep. run up to the election, which I guess in your role you're now going to have to be yeah. uh, fighting against. Uh, look, Lee, I want to show you a bit of a GB News exclusive. Uh, so this is from our uh, great reporter, Charlie yeah. Peters, who revealed today that National Lottery Heritage Fund yep. broke its own rules after providing £250,000 on an initiative uh, which runs controversial political speeches, mm. including an, by an anti-police <coughs> activist... Yep and an activist that says the Met contains a gang which executes black kids. Watch this. 2021, when the National Lottery Heritage Fund awarded almost £250,000 to a group called 81 Acts of Exuberant Defiance. But GB News can reveal that some of the lottery funding has gone towards supporting a political speech by an activist, breaching the fund's rules. Campaigner Stafford Scott gave a talk at a Brixton venue earlier this month which accused the royal family of being involved in slavery. He slammed the Met as a gang executing black kids. I mean, Lee, this organisation, <sighs> should it really be receiving this money? No, we shouldn't, Dan. I mean, when the British public go out and spend their two quid on a, on a lottery ticket, they expect, you know, to have a chance of winning some decent money, but they also expect their money to go to a good cause. That's why we all play the lottery. It's a bit of a fun. You know what? These are... I would describe them as political parasites. They're taking advantage of the goodwill of the British public again, giving their money, spending their money, what they think is a good cause. And these creatures are lurking around, they're filling dodgy forms out, presenting that to the lottery and getting hundreds of thousands of pounds to basically what campaign against government and come out with this nonsense that we just heard there. They should hang their heads in shame. Yep, couldn't agree more. Uh, now, look, Lee, finally, you've really made it now. You have really made it. Do you know you were the subject of a pop song? Well, I heard a clip this morning, Dan. It's in my head. I've been humming it, and hopefully we can, we can sing along together. OK, well, go on, let's do it, then. 30 what you having for tea? Do I need to keep my gobshot at me hanging from a tree? 30 PD, what you having for tea? Who can't stand footballers taking the knee? 30 PD, what you having for tea? Is it tax pay funded? Are you creaming up for me? 30 PD, what you having for tea? Who calls the people illegal when they're simply refugees? It's quite catchy. It's I'm very catchy. I tell you what, Dan, it's very catchy. It's a great advert for me. Some of the lines in there are good policies, by the way. So I think I might use that during, in the run up to the next general election. Help me get elected. Thank you, Maria Tucker. That, they're just helping you out. They are helping me out massively. Look, if they're writing songs about me, like I said before, Dan, on this show, I am living rent free in their heads. <laughs> well, on that note, Lee, great to see you. Yep. Uh, Deputy. Chairman of the Conservative Party, Westminster's toughest talking MP, Lee Anderson, our very own. Thank you very much. But coming up, as some senior SNP politicians claim Nicola Sturgeon's arrest is inevitable in the police probe into the party's finances, has the SNP ended up destroying the Scottish separatist movement? That's the big debate with my superstar panel soon. And you'll get a first look at tomorrow's newspaper front pages then too. But next, after vaccine widow Charlotte Wright triumphed in her tireless fight for justice today with an inquest confirming her 
husband Stephen died because of the AstraZeneca jab, why isn't the pharmaceutical giant being held legally responsible? And is the vaccine damage compensation scheme substantial enough? Charlotte joins me live in the studio next for a TV exclusive to tell her important story. Monday to Thursday nights on GB News. At 6, it's Deebs & Co. 7 o'clock, Farage. At 8, join Jacob Rees-Mogg. And at 9, Dan Wooten tonight, followed by headliners. On TV, radio and online, this is GB News. First and foremost, I am a GB News fan, and I was before I was working here. Just love the fact that we're asking the questions that a lot of establishment media won't ask. With a bit of a twist, we not only want to inform you, but we want to keep you entertained. It's worth the drive because you get in and the team's all ready and waiting. They're itching to go. And it's a proper little family. GB News is the people's channel. It's the audience that makes the programme sing. We're giving our viewers and our listeners a voice. I see the thousands of your letters, tweets, emails, you name it, coming in. Britain is broken. How on earth did we get into this mess? But more importantly, how do we get out of it? The establishment had their chance. Now we're here to represent you. It's time for something different. It's time for GB News. I'm very patriotic. I believe in Britain. Our best days lie ahead. Britain's watching. Britain's watching. Join us here on GB News, the People's Channel. Britain's News Channel. Join me, Patrick Christie's Monday to Friday, three till six. We tackle the day's news agenda like you've never seen before. It's high tempo, high octane, the most controversial topics and the best guests. You will not be able to take your eyes and ears off it. I'm not afraid to ask the questions that you really want answered. Three till six p.m. Monday to Friday on GB News, the People's Channel, Britain's News Channel. GB News has its own late night paper preview show, Headliners, where comedians take you through the next day's top news stories. You don't have to bother reading the newspaper, we've got it covered for you. Headliners, every night at 11 p.m. and repeated every morning at 5 a.m. We won't send you to sleep like some of the other paper review shows out there. GB News, the people's channel, Britain's news channel. Join me, Camilla Tomini, on Sunday mornings from 9.30, taking the politicians to task and breaking out of SW1 to see how their decisions are affecting you across the UK. Bursting the Westminster bubble every Sunday morning, only on GB News, the People's Channel. Britain's watching. Hello, I'm Calvin Robinson. Do not miss my Common Sense Crusade Saturdays at 7pm. Join me for some in-depth discussions on faith. Is that not the start of the slippery slope? It's very much so. And the big moral questions of the day. <laughs> I'm baffled. You've got some nerve. Only on GB News, the people's channel, Britain's news channel. I'm Andrew Doyle. Join me at 7 o'clock every Sunday night for Free Speech Nation, the show where I tackle the week's biggest stories in politics and current affairs with the help of my two comedian panellists and a variety of special guests. Free Speech Nation, Sunday nights from 7 on GB News, the People's Channel, Britain's News Channel. Welcome back. Now, I'm sure you remember the devastating story of Dr. Stephen Wright, the 32-year-old NHS psychologist who tragically died from a blood clot on the brain just 10 days after receiving his first dose of the AstraZeneca vaccine back in January 2021. Stephen's widow and mother of his two young children, great friend of the show, Charlotte Wright, has been fiercely campaigning to have the vaccine's role in his sudden death acknowledged ever since. And today... Finally, this moving milestone was reached with a coroner's inquest ruling that Stephen died from, quote, unintended complications of the vaccine. His death certificate had officially only listed natural causes before today. Charlotte's very important, very significant legal victory comes as vaccine victim and BBC presenter Lisa Shaw's husband revealed that her death certificate did list the AstraZeneca vaccine as her cause of death. And he says he is desperate for the country to sit up and take notice of her heartbreaking and far from unique story. Shockingly, the legal acknowledgement Charlotte received at Southwark Cowan Court today has taken over two years to achieve. And having still received no apology from AstraZeneca, Charlotte remains far from happy with them or the British government. She is now pursuing legal action against the pharmaceutical company, uh, company along with dozens of other vaccine victims. I'm honoured to say Charlotte is back in the studio with me again today. 
Charlotte, I can only imagine how emotional today has been for you, but well done you, because you fought for this and it wasn't easy. We all did. How do you feel? Um, exhausted. <laughs> um, but um, it, does, it does provide relief, uh, I think, for fighting for so long. Um, and now to have that proof in black and white is, is, is um, comforting and, and, and we do feel that we are finally acknowledged. Because it was outrageous, it wasn't listed on the death certificate, yeah. wasn't it? Mm. And do you think they just wanted you to go away? I mean, I just, at the time, I just felt silenced. It was the, you know, it was the actual hospital that called me to tell me that it was the vaccine that caused his death. And, uh, and that was about two months after he died. So it, it's just been so long um, uh, to, to try and get any one to listen. I mean, it was Juby News yourselves that was the first to kind of even really hear us um, and let us speak. And um, and of course, there was pushback. There was. There was pushback yeah. against the channel. There was mm. pushback against you. Mm. Uh, we were collectively described yeah. as conspiracy theorists, as anti-vaxxers. Yeah. Do you feel angry or do you feel glad that people are maybe starting to educate themselves now? I mean, to, for it to be spoken about now, I'm, I'm, I'm definitely glad. Because um, the BBC but, covered your story today. Uh, I mean, I and they've ignored you they have, for yeah. years. Yeah, I mean, even when they came, they came to my house and um, and filmed me. I, I, I still felt like they they purposefully put um, a, a, a pro vaccine spin on it um, and, and and sort of twisted my words a little bit as well. So um, for them to cover it nationally now. Um, um, was shocking, really. I wasn't expecting it. No, and it is good, but I think a lot of people should be apologising for the way they have treated people like you mm -hmm. over the past couple of years. Uh, how do you think Stephen would would feel today? Proud? I think to see myself and, and both his parents standing there in camaraderie, I can't say that word. Camaraderie, um, yeah. That's it. Um, um, just so he's in, got in an strength absolutely together. wonderful family. Thanks. They're so they're so supportive, and uh, and I really couldn't have done everything without them, and and my family as well. Just having two young children um, is is hard without that support. So I'm very grateful to them. But your fight goes on, and it's important. So can we talk about the next sure. steps, mm. Charlotte? Because of course, this legal action mm. is building. But one of the things that a lot of people don't know, and it mm. feels particularly outrageous, is mm. that. They, they have an indemnity, you know, AstraZeneca mm. have an indemnity. So mm. anything that you potentially win, am I right in saying it will be paid for by the government? It will be, yeah. Um, so, to, you know, to push the, the vaccine out so quickly, the, the government said that they had to indemnify, um, therefore knowing that there will be adverse reactions. So I think one of our kind of um, things that we've been trying to to say is that if, if you knew that before you rolled it out, then where was the support for the people that you knew would mm. be adversely react, um, affected by it? You know, so it, it should have been in place before. And there's a whole number of you who are taking this legal yeah. action together. What, what can you tell me about where it's at? Um, uh, just that um, uh, Peter Todd and Sarah Moore both um, together, um, they, they have sent the letter um, of intent to AstraZeneca and um, the government, and we are awaiting a response from them any day now. So, do you think there was a risk with this, with the government, uh, with the way the government acted? You know, should should they never have agreed uh, to this indemnity? Um, I I I think that if you are going to roll out and and then to a point mandate something, mm. then there should have been a lot of more care and consideration for those who you knew would have been affected yeah. by such a decision. Because you lost your wonderful husband. He was young, he was vibrant, he was healthy, he was mm. a doctor. Yeah. And your children have lost their dad. Yeah. So I think it's really important we just think of the human toll exactly. of this decision exactly. today. Yeah. Well, look, we've been thinking of you. Thank you. So happy for you. Thank you. Uh, but, of course, the fight goes on. It does. And you know we're with you <laughs> here you at so GB much. News. Thank you so Thank much. You. Charlotte Wright. Thank you.
Now, when we approached them for comment earlier today, AstraZeneca said, we are very saddened by Stephen Wright's death and extend our deepest sympathies to his family for their loss. Patient safety is our highest priority and regulatory authorities have clear and stringent standards to ensure the safety use of all medicines, including vaccines. From the body of evidence in clinical trials and real world data, Vaxevria has continuously been shown to have an acceptable safety profile and regulators around the world consistently state that the benefits of vaccination outweigh the risks of extremely rare potential side effects. Meanwhile, the Department for Health and Social Care said more than 144 million COVID vaccines have been given in England, which has helped the country to live with COVID and saved thousands of lives. All vaccines being used in the UK have undergone robust clinical trials and have met with the medicines and healthcare products regulatory agencies' strict standards of safety, effectiveness and quality. Coming up, with Camilla's friend defending her following horrid personal attacks, including from her own stepson, is the Queen Consort King Charles's biggest asset? Famed royal author and journalist Robert Hardman joins me live in the studio soon. But next, with fears growing among senior SNP politicians that Nicola Sturgeon will be arrested next as the party finance scandal deepens, is the SNP inadvertently finishing the Scottish separatist movement? That's the big debate with my superstar panel. Plus, we're going to have a first look at tomorrow's newspaper front pages hot off the press. That's in just two minutes' time. You've probably seen politicians interviewed a thousand times, but we do it differently. We find out who they really are. We don't shout, we chat, and hopefully we bring a bit of light, not just heat. Did you All know Kate Moss? Apparently. <laughs> uh, <laughs> do you have a pair of jeans or a pair of jeans? <laughs> no. no, of course I don't. What would I do with them? My friends are like, oh my God, what's she doing now? Join me every Sunday at six for Gloria Meets, only on GB News, the People's Channel, Britain's news channel. I'm Jacob Rees-Mogg, the Member of Parliament for North East Somerset and a former Government Minister. For years I've walked the corridors of power in both Westminster and the City of London. We need to have the arguments, the discussions on how we make it better. Crop failures, famine, war, <laughs> suffering on a scale completely <laughs> unimaginable. We are putting the cart before the horse. As Charles I said at the scaffold, he was the true defender of liberty. Yeah, I've completely derailed the conversation. <laughs> Join me Monday to Thursday at 8pm on GB News, Britain's news channel. Here on GB News Live, we'll be keeping you in the picture, finding out what's happening across the country and finding out why it matters to you. We'll have the facts fast with our team of reporters and specialist correspondents. Wherever it's happening, we'll be there. From 12 noon on TV, radio and online. GB News, the people's channel, Britain's news channel. I'm Andrew Doyle. Join me at 7 o'clock every Sunday night for Free Speech Nation, the show where I tackle the week's biggest stories in politics and current affairs with the help of my two comedian panellists and a variety of special guests. Free Speech Nation, Sunday nights from 7 on GB News, the people's channel, Britain's news channel. Here on GB News, we're starting the conversation and having the debate that the establishment won't have. No one will be cancelled. Join me at 4pm every Saturday and Sunday. We'll be discussing all the big topics of the weekend. Oh, get cracking! <laughs> always honest, always fun. Only on GB News, Britain's news channel. It's 10pm, I'm Dan Wotton. Tonight, first the Chief Executive then the National Treasurer, and now senior SNP politicians are plagued with fear that Nicola Sturgeon, Queen Nick, could be next to be nicked, with some claiming her arrest is inevitable. And as the Deputy First Minister and one of Sturgeon's most loyal followers makes this admission... Probably goes beyond Nicola Sturgeon in terms of perhaps uh, a, a culture that has been allowed to develop at headquarters. So has the SNP inadvertently destroyed Scottish separatism forevermore? That's the big debate with my superstar panel next. And tonight, I'm joined by Dominique Samuels, Adam Brooks and Matthew Laza.
Breaking tonight, Rishi Sunak will toughen his illegal migration bill to avoid a right-wing Tory rebellion. That's according to insiders. So as the rebels demand ministers are given powers to ignore ECHR rulings, will the government finally succeed in stopping the boats? We'll discuss that promising development in the media buzz. Also on the way, emboldened by Gary Lineker, no doubt, woke BBC presenter Chris Packham issued a rallying cry to join Extinction Rebellion's ruinous protest make it a better place. I'm going to be there on the 22nd, it's Biodiversity Earth Day, chipping in on that account. I hope to see you. So after that clear breach of impartiality rules, will BBC bosses send pack and packing? The one and only Jim Davidson gives his response, live and uncancelled. And as the Queen Consort's friends publicly defend her against attacks, including from her own treacherous stepson, Harry, is the royal who was once dubbed Britain's most hated woman now the King's greatest asset? Legendary royal author and journalist Robert Hardman joins me live. Plus, after the Dylan Mulvaney misstep, Bud Light has a new competitor in the form of Florida Governor Ron DeSantis. Couldn't cut it with the boys, so you pushed women off the podium. Real man, steal first place. Because without you, sports would be fair. <laughs> I'm going to bring you more of that hilarious spoof from Team DeSantis in Florida. Uh, but is former Tory leader William Hague wrong to tell the Women's Institute that they should accept trans folk? We're going to thrash that out in tonight's Greatest British and Union Jackass. Uh, first front pages arriving in mere moments too hot off the press, right after the news headlines with Polly Middlehurst. Dan, thank you and good evening to you. Well, as you've been hearing, Scotland's First Minister, Humza Yousaf, will oversee the SNP's finances after Colin Beattie today resigned as Treasurer as police investigate the party's finances. Mr Beattie is the second person to have been questioned by detectives who are trying to establish how more than £600,000 given in donations and set aside for an independence referendum has been used up. Mr Yousaf has tweeted following the resignation announcement of offering his thanks and adding that the decision has come at the best time for the party and in its best interests. Now, the Prime Minister is urging unionists in Northern Ireland to return to Stormont, saying restoring devolved institutions is the best way forward. Rishi Sunak was speaking alongside other world leaders in Belfast to mark 25 years since the signing of the Good Friday Agreement. They've concluded the anniversary with a gala dinner at Hillsborough Castle this evening, where the former Prime Minister, Tony Blair, praised the people of Northern Ireland. Northern Ireland is a world away today from the Northern Ireland defined by bombs and bullets that I grew up with. So, the people of Northern Ireland are remarkable people. They're people of strong convictions, on occasions stubborn ones, but always redeemed by the qualities of a good heart and a creative mind. Former Prime Minister Tony Blair speaking earlier on this evening. Now, the Scottish Government says it has no option but to take legal action against UK ministers blocking their gender recognition bill. The legislation aims to make it easier for people in Scotland to change their legally recognised gender, laws which Westminster has challenged. MSPs voted in December last year to pass the controversial gender recognition bill by 86 votes to 39. An inquest has ruled the death of a doctor after his AstraZeneca COVID jab was due to unintended complications of the vaccine. 32-year-old Stephen Wright was an NHS psychologist in South East London. He died from a blood clot to his brain 10 days after his first dose of the vaccine in January 2021. The coroner described it as a very unusual and deeply tragic case. And Labour is accusing the government of denying justice to victims of the infected blood scandal. Between 1970 and 1991, thousands of people were infected with HIV and hepatitis after being given contaminated blood products. An interim report, the chair of the inquiry, Sir Brian Longstaff, recommended that reparations should be extended to include bereaved parents and children. Cabinet Office Minister Jeremy Quinn told the Commons the government is considering that recommendation. 
And lastly, the supermarket giant Tesco says it plans to appeal after Lidl won a high court battle over branding. Lidl argued Tesco's use of a yellow circle on its club card was an infringement of their main store logo. A judge agreed and found in favour of Lidl, saying it was a violation of their trademark rights and copyright. That's all from me. I'm back in an hour. Now back to Dan. Tomorrow's news tonight now in our media bus. So let's kick off with a very first look at the front pages hot off the press. And the Metro leads with the National Cybersecurity Centre issue issuing an official threat notice as concerns are raised that pro-Russian hackers could be aiming to destroy critical infrastructure in the UK in response to our support for Ukraine. We must unite to protect women's rights. Now, that's the headline in the Daily Express as they report that rival MPs, Labour's Rosie Duffield and Conservative Miriam Cates, both great women, will call for united action to defend women's rights tomorrow. Let's see if Keir Starmer, who, who thinks that uh, women uh, can have a penis, is going to join in. The Guardian have decided to lean on, lean on claims by senior Ministry of Justice officials that they are ready to quit if Dominic Raab survives his witch hunt. Oh, sorry, I mean bullying inquiry, which is expected to be handed to the PM tomorrow. You know, the PM needs to stand firm on this one. Raab is his most loyal ally, loyal defender. And I think it's going to say a lot about Sunak if he chucks Raab to the curb. My superstar panel back with me now. Political commentator Dominique Samuels, the businessman and activist Adam Brooks and the former Labour Party advisor Matthew Laza. Now, SNP Treasurer Colin Beattie has sensationally quit a day after he was arrested by police investigating the party's finances. Beattie was released without charge pending further investigation, but the 71-year-old has in the past few hours announced he is stepping back from the role with immediate effect. Staying in a statement on a personal level, this decision has not been easy. But it is the right decision to avoid further distraction to the important work being led by Humza Yousaf to improve the SNP's governance and transparency. He says, I will continue to cooperate fully with Police Scotland's inquiries. And he said it would be inappropriate for him to comment any further on the live case. But Scottish Deputy Leader Jackie Barley criticised First Minister Humza Useless for his failure to axe Beatty himself, claiming his priority is to protect the SNP, not the people of Scotland. And even the Deputy First uh, Minister, Shona Robieson, a longtime ally of Nicola Sturgeon, admitted her party had allowed a toxic cover-up culture to take hold. The party has to get its house in order. Uh, that's what the public would expect. It probably goes beyond Nicola Sturgeon in terms of perhaps uh, a, a culture that has been allowed to develop at headquarters and in terms of the governance of the party. One that perhaps needed to be more open and more transparent and you know, people being able to ask questions. I mean, this is extraordinary stuff. That woman was one of Sturgeon's biggest allies a matter of days ago. Sturgeon's the only senior SNP official named on the party's most recent financial accounts who has not been interviewed under caution or arrested. And according to reports, senior members of the SNP fear that a bombshell arrest of the former First Minister is now imminent. So, will Scotland's separatist fantasy die in the hands of Scotland's scandal-ridden ruling party, Dominic Samuels? Well, um, I think so. Though it's such a shame about Colin because, I don't know, he just has the cutest face. <laughs> <laughs> he looks like a, a cute little garden gnome, but that's, that's just the bottom of mine. But yeah, definitely, um, with regards to the actual allegations themselves, I think for many people, um, if this is what they're like pre-independence, then people are going to be wondering, you know, they, they might be even worse once they're given... Even well, if they power. can't run a party, how on earth can they run a country? Because yeah. remember, they've run a nation 
into the ground. Yeah, exactly. And and what's worse is that the SNP um, do act like they are morally above everyone else. They act like they're morally above um, Westminster. Well, Sturgeon only... was constantly calling on Tory PMs to stand Exactly. Out. Only for us to discover that they're actually worse. Yeah. Certainly no better, anyway. Um, so time will tell, but I think Scottish people uh, do perhaps deserve a say on who their leader should be, especially because um, Humza Useless, as you call him, mm, seems to be more interested in actually preserving the SNP rather than mm. being honest and transparent Well, he's, he's showing public. he's completely useless, Matthew Lars, because here's the thing, right? You were a senior advisor to Ed Miliband. Surely, if you were advising useless right now, you would say, look, doesn't matter that Sturgeon got you this job. It doesn't matter that you were her lap dog for years. You have to cut this woman loose. Not because she's necessarily done anything wrong. This is an ongoing live investigation, but because she is destroying you politically. I mean, absolutely. Uh, and I think it contrasts with uh, Keir Starmer's behaviour um, with regards to his predecessor, uh, where he's acted decisively against Jeremy mm -hmm. Corbyn. And the fact that n nobody who's been involved is, has been questioned has been suspended. Obviously, we await outcomes, but in, mm -hmm. whilst you wait for those outcomes, people need to step back, not just from their role, but from the party. And it's, out it's extraordinary uh, the, the, that he hasn't done that. And it just, I, I don't think he's going to be First Minister mm -hmm. for very long. He, he's clearly a very, very weak leader. Adam Brooks, you say the SNP are finished. Why? They are finished. I mean, they're a laughing stock. Not only, I mean, we've got Hamza Youssef, who is a big joke, really, for, for many reasons. But, you know, even f from the COVID uh, response, you know, to all the recent events. Now, if, if they can do this, allegedly do this, with their money, or, you know, what would they do with taxpayers' money? How, as a Scottish person, how would I trust them to run my country? You know, and... Yes, it, it might be a dream of many Scots to be independent, but it's not going to come via the SNP. And I think, you know, minimum, it's 10 years before this discussion ever happens again. It's finished. Independence is finished. Mm. I know. And I mean, the thing is, regardless of what happens with this investigation, Dominique, uh, Sturgeon's legacy is destroyed. No, yeah, it is. I mean, I think... She attempted to salvage it by resigning when she did um, and making it about her just wanting to get on with her life. Mm. Um, well, I call it, BS on Yeah, that. I mean, is it a coincidence that shortly after she resigns, this whole palaver begins yeah. with people being arrested? Yeah. I, I don't think so. I mean, Dan, can you imagine, you know, if it's videoed her uh, and recorded her being arrested, maybe in handcuffs, what message that sends out? Mm. It's going to be so embarrassing. Well, yeah. And of course, it's, it's, we don't know. know what's going to happen. We've got to be clear on that. But I just remember this was a woman who day after day mm. used to attack Boris Johnson, make out as if he was some sort of high-level criminal because he ate a piece of birthday cake on mm. his birthday. They, SNP, went on relentlessly about the Partygate mm. inquiry, given what was going on in their party, potentially, it's quite shocking. But look, a very important legal note, the allegations surrounding the SNP's finances are denied by all parties involved. The police investigation is ongoing. No charges have been brought against anyone. And interestingly, uh, Sturgeon says she's willing to cooperate with the police, but she has not yet been asked. Now, Bud Light is still reeling from their Dylan Mulvaney ad that knocked £5 billion off the value of its parent company. Here's a reminder. This month, I celebrated my day 365 of womanhood, and Bud Light sent me possibly the best gift ever, a can with my face on it. Check out my Instagram story to see how you can enjoy March Madness with Bud Light and maybe win some money, too. Love ya! Cheers! Go team! Whatever team you love, I love, too. Okay. Well, taking a hiatus from his prolonged battle with the woke warriors at Disney, Florida Governor Ron DeSantis, love this man, uh, decided to weigh in on the Mulvaney madness, introducing their own counter ad his campaign team wrote in Florida, girls play girls sports and boys play boys sports. That's why we are replacing Bud Light with Freedom Heavy, made 100% woke free. And this is their masterpiece of an ad. Tim DeSantis presents Real Man! of women's sports. 
Pirates. Today, we recognize the men who've hacked the system. Hacked the system. Once mediocre in the men's division, now cream of the crop in the women's. From mediocre to champion. You couldn't cut it with the boys, so you pushed women off the podium. Real man, still first place. Because without you, sports would be fair. Without you, women's sports would be for, well, women. That Bud Light is how you do it. <laughs> Matthew Lauza, Adam Brooks, Dominic Samuels, please do stand by because coming up as commendable Tory rebels corner Sunak over breakfast actually to toughen up his illegal migration bill, including adding powers to ignore the ECHR, is optimism growing that the Conservatives can stop the boats. We tackle that when my panel return in the media buzz. But next, as Camilla's oldest friend publicly fends off attacks on her behalf, including those from her own stepson, is the Queen Consort set to play a massive role in the monarchy's future. Legendary royal author and journalist Robert Hardman joins me live in studio straight after this. I joined GB News because I was sick and tired of not hearing my views being represented, not just mine, but so many people that I knew and spoke to. Oh, I just couldn't get my voice out there. I couldn't say anything. I couldn't do anything. Whatever the narrative was, I kind of had to follow it. GB News is there to provide a voice for those who have been ignored by the establishment media. We think different things. We've got a different style. GB News is here to be optimistic and positive about the future. It's real kind of dynamic and flowing with the audience very much at the heart of it, like a big family. Here at GB News, we talk about the things that matter to you. Hearing the voices from right across our towns and cities, especially our towns. All sides of the argument represented with a heavy dose of opinion. We're on a mission here to make a difference. And the GB News family really is here for you and whatever time of day you can watch or listen. Britain's watching. Britain's watching. We're proud to be GB News. The People's Channel. Britain's News Channel. Monday to Thursday, 9 p.m. till 11 p.m. Join me, Dan Wooten. I'll bring you the sharpest takes and hottest debates. Do you okay. not believe in prisons? I, I don't believe in prisons. I'm completely right. stunned. I guarantee you there'll be no spin, no bias, no censorship. I actually was personally quite offended by it. <laughs> and no reason to go to bed. So I guess they've always been quite woke. That's Dan Wooten tonight on TV, radio and online. Monday to Thursday from 9 p.m. till 11 p.m. on GB News. The People's Channel. Britain's news channel. We are GB News, the People's Channel. And right across the United Kingdom. You can find us on Sky Channel 512. Virgin Media Channel 604. Freesat Channel 216. Freeview Channel 236. And UView Channel 236. You can also take us with you on DAB Plus Radio. With the GB News app and at the website gbnews.uk. We're absolutely everywhere. Come join us on GB News, the People's Channel, Britain's news channel. Start the day with GB News. We catch up on all the big stories you didn't hear the night before. And take a look at what the world's talking about this morning. That's right, Monday to Thursdays from 6 o'clock. It's Breakfast with Eamon and Isabel. Straight after breakfast, join us, Bev Turner and Andrew Pearce. We're going to take you through till noon. We'll be tackling the big topics of the day, including the things that the other channels just won't talk about. If it's happening, it's happening here. Wake up to mornings on GB News. The People's Channel. Britain's News Channel. New to GB News is the Saturday Five. Join us every Saturday from 8pm as we debate the week's stories. Right, folks, that Ooh. was a spicy one, wasn't it? With us four, plus a special guest. Sometimes she has to stick her foot in it. Sometimes she has to say things as they are. Sometimes I think we should keep the refugees and send the pensioners to Rwanda. <laughs> then we'd be in a much better state. Well, Benjamin, yeah. that is that. The Saturday Five. Saturday night from 8. Only on GB News, the People's Channel. Britain's News Channel. I'm Mark White. As GB News Home and Security Editor, I cover those key issues that are so important to you. Our authorities, our communities doing all they can to combat violent crime. With the public services under unbearable strain, why are we still failing to control our borders? Defence, the first priority of any government, has been continually hollowed out. Can we trust our politicians to protect the armed forces? Join me, Mark White, on GB News.
Welcome back. Jim Davidson on the way. But first, as the king prepares for the biggest day of his life, next month's coronation, we'll also be a defining moment for Camilla, who after nearly three decades has rehabilitated her image from the hated other woman to queen. But this remarkable moment was not always at the forefront of her mind, according to one of her closest confidants, Lady Lansdowne, who revealed for the first time personal stories from Camilla's life in an unprecedented interview. She said at the weekend it was never any sort of plan. It would make her laugh just to think of it. It was quite daunting, but nothing she couldn't cope with. However, the momentous event has thrown renewed scrutiny on both Camilla and the royal family as a whole. Despite the king taking drastic steps to cut spending and improve public perception, a YouGov poll revealed yesterday that 51% of the British public disapproves of taxpayers funding the coronation. Meanwhile, over a 1,000 Republican protesters have promised they'll chant Not My King during the coronation parade, while Camilla has avoided using a crown with a controversial diamond to avoid controversy. Joining me now, The Daily Mail's Robert Hardman, author of the book Queen of Our Times, which is out in paperback tomorrow. So, Robert, look, it's been an extraordinary seven months, hasn't it, when we think it was so soon that the country came together on a grand scale to celebrate the life of Queen Elizabeth II. Are you sensing that there's public excitement? Because there's been a few whispers that maybe we're a little bit concerned that the route is shorter, the public isn't as uh, exhilarated as maybe Buckingham Palace hoped they would be at this point. Well, I, I, I think, Dan, part of the problem is that, that everybody sees this coronation through the prism of the last mm. one. And it's quite interesting looking at the planning for the last one. They were all looking back at 1937 when George VI was crowned. It's what people do. They go, well, what happened last time? And last time it's completely different. I mean, we were on rations. We were coming out of post-war austerity. It, there was a sort of sense of absolute national rejuvenation. Um, and we had a 27-year-old queen coming to the throne. So it was just a very... It was a completely different Times situation. are a bit tougher. T times are just different. I mean, you know, you've got to be in your 80s to remember the last coronation. Um, I, I think, actually, it, it follows in the great traditions of all royal events I've been covering now for 25, uh, 30 years nearly, which is that in the run-up to every big event, that is always the, oh, no-one cares, no-one cares, it's all going to go flat. I remember in the run-up to the queen's... Uh, Golden Jubilee yeah, yeah, in 2002. Yeah. Yeah. Remember a very prominent story in the Times newspaper saying um, uh, no one's interested, no street parties have been booked and it's all going to be a bit flat. Yeah. Um, and we had the same in the run-up to the Diamond Jubilee, we had the same in the run-up to the Platinum Jubilee. And, yeah, and we, even, by the way, in the run-up to the Queen Mother's funeral and Prince Philip's yeah, funeral, and the British yes. public proved everyone wrong. Well, you also, you have this... this the, in, 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 oh, whatever the big royal event is, there are always the glitches as well. I mean, I, I very well remember when... Uh, when, when the now king was marrying the then Camilla Parker Bowles in, in 2005 at Windsor. And in the run-up to that, there was a problem with the licensing arrangements, which meant it had to be transferred to mm. Windsor Town Hall. And then, just as it was all about to happen, the Pope died. <laughs> and it all had to Delayed. be delayed. And everyone went, oh, no, oh, no, this is all, you know, whoa, yeah. it's, all, it's all disaster. Um, we had the same in the run-up to the wedding of uh, William and Kate. There was a huge row about, oh, my God, they've forgotten to invite mm. Tony Blair and Gordon Brown. Um, in the run-up to, obviously... Uh, Harry and Meghan's wedding, there was uh, the, her father not turning up. Mm. So you get these uh, events that, 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 that come up in, in, in the run-up to these mm. big things, and everyone says, oh, these are terrible. And then the day happens, mm. and every single time the event just sails on because it's so much bigger than the little stories that came before it. So, yeah, sure, I mean, there might be a handful of Republicans um, uh, shouting somewhere along the route, and there'll be uh, a minority of about 0.1%. Mm. Uh, you know, and the, they'll the, be shouted down by oh, the monarchists. Yes, in the I, I, I suspect. Probably um, dragged away well, by I, the monarchists I, in the crowd. Know, they've said they, they're going to be bringing along megaphones. Well, they're going to need to bring along mm. megaphones, but, um, you know, I, I, you know, this sort of thing. It's a free society, it's a democracy. Yeah. This is what happens. Uh, yes, of course, it's a smaller service, it's a smaller service in the Abbey because you can't put 8,000 mm. people in the Abbey like you could in 1953 because back then you could do what you like and they just built essentially a football stadium inside a Norman. Cathedral, uh, and they've just racked it up to the rafters with seating. You can't do that now; be illegal. I mean, the the, the fire regulations wouldn't allow it. But uh, aside from all that, um, you know, it, it, we're not living in that era. I mean, in that in that era, you had nearly a thousand hereditary peers yeah. in the best seats to pay homage. That's not going to happen this time. 
How significant uh, is the fact that the king clearly wants his wife, Camilla, to have a central role uh, in this coronation? Something that for a long time uh, wouldn't have felt possible. Obviously, Camilla has really turned things around. Very significant uh, that her closest friends, her equivalent of her lady-in-waiting, mm -hmm. was clearly given the nod uh, to speak out to the Sunday Times. There was thinly veiled criticism of Harry and Meghan, but they also spoke about Camilla the woman. Uh, do you think it's right for Charles to make Camilla such a part of his coronation yeah, story? Absolutely. She's, she's, she's the, the queen. And we, think, when king, when we think we should call her that, not the queen. Well, in, 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 in due course, she'll be called... Uh, she, she, she can now. You can, she, she can be called the queen. She mm. can be called Queen Camilla. Uh, I mean, one of the reasons that... Uh, I think that the, to begin with, um, there was uh, the, particularly in official sort of documents and stuff, they, they refer to her as the mm. Queen Consul, is just to avoid that confusion with the late Queen. We had the same, I mean, again, if you look back at 1952 when George VI died, all of a sudden you had two Queen Elizabeths mm. because you had one on the throne, yeah. Queen Regnant, and you had the, the, the wife of the late King, which at that point yeah. she was made Queen Mother. But and on she a said she didn't like level, that. Right, I'm yeah. struggling with it. And do you understand this? Because I understand officially we can say Queen Camilla, but when I refer to the Queen at the moment, of course I'm talking about the late Queen, mm. and that is going to take some getting used everything, to. Everything, everything takes time to adjust, but I, it's absolutely as night follows day when a king becomes king and his wife yeah. becomes queen. But she's and finding why her should voice, she, why should she? We be turning, why should we be tearing up a thousand years of, of, mm. of established yeah. precedent and history? Every wife of every king has yeah. been queen. Well, I, and she should be, because she's brilliant. Well, I guess the only counter-argument, and I'm on the fence on this one, I'm going to be honest with you, is that we were told, we were promised, uh, that she was not even going to be queen consort, she was going to be princess consort. Then we were told and assured she's only be, only going to be mm. queen consort. But look, I, I, I understand. I do understand. I just think it's going to take a bit of getting used to. I think, I mean, everything uh, after 70 years of mm. the longest reign in history, the longest serving, longest reigning monarch in history, of course things are going to take time. Yeah. I mean, it was. it felt very odd the first few times we all sang God save the king. Yeah. I thought one of the a, a, a real turning point actually was on Christmas Day, 3 p.m., and it just came up that strap line, HM the king. Mm. You thought it's Christmas Day. Every Christmas I've been alive. Yeah, this yeah, has, yeah. It's been her. So of course it's going to take time. But you know, you look at how how uh, Camilla, Queen Consort, whatever you want to call her. Uh, you know, she, she's absolutely central to all this. She's she's mm. she's she's uh, she's such a key okay. part of it. Uh, finally, uh, talk of historic reparations uh, to a quiche with no ham but broad <laughs> beans. Is King Charles woke? <laughs> King Charles has got to be all things to all people, which is what all monarchs have to be. Um, you know, some people are going to say he's woke. Some would say he's a sort of throwback to a bygone era. If you listen to the Republicans, they say it's all over. Uh, if you say, yeah, I mean, people say, why are, we, why are we eating quiche? You know, why have we got some sort of vegetarian royal dish? With broad I mean, beans. But these, these, no, thank you. <laughs> this, no, thank you. But the fact is, this, this, I think this just goes to the heart of what our monarchy is. It's, it, you know, it, it represents all things to all people, and they, they like to have a yeah. sort of row about it. But ultimately, you know, if you look at the, 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 the central stats, what is the system most people yeah, yeah. are happy with? I mean, it's way out in front. It's far more popular totally. than anything else. And you know what? I agree with you. We're going to turn up that weekend. I think, yes, it's yeah, had a yeah. slow start Always in terms does. of the hype, but we will be there in our droves. There's going to be coronation fever. I think it's just going to come a little bit later than maybe what yep. people thought. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the Daily Mail's Robert Hardman, uh, of course, author of the book Queen of Our Times, out in paperback tomorrow. <laughs> But coming up in Uncancelled, as the BBC's wildlife wokester Chris Packham tries to whip up the Extinction Rebellion mob ahead of their deranged demo this weekend, should he face the sack for breaking the Beeb's beleaguered impartiality rules? Well, comedy stalwart, former BBC man Jim Davidson joins me soon. But first, in the media buzz, with woke welcome signs in Dover due to be replaced with warnings that illegal arrivals have broken the law, are Tory rebels right when they tell Rishi Sudak we must ignore the ECHR to halt the migrant crisis. My superstar panel thrashed that one out. Plus, we're going to have more of tomorrow's newspaper front pages straight after this. 
I joined GB News because I was sick and tired of not hearing my views being represented, not just mine, but so many people that I knew and spoke to. I just couldn't get my voice out there. I couldn't say anything. I couldn't do anything. Whatever the narrative was, I kind of had to follow it. GB News is there to provide a voice for those who have been ignored by the establishment media. We think different things. We've got a different style. GB News is here to be optimistic and positive about the future. It's real kind of dynamic and flowing with the audience very much at the heart of it, like a big family. Here at GB News, we talk about the things that matter to you. Hearing the voices from right across our towns and cities, especially our towns. All sides of the argument represented with a heavy dose of opinion. We're on a mission here to make a difference. And the GB News family really is here for you and whatever time of day you can watch or listen. Britain's watching. Britain's watching. We're proud to be GB News. The People's Channel. Britain's News Channel. Westminster is going around in ever-decreasing circles, followed by the media. Britain is broken. How on earth did we get into this mess? But more importantly, how do we get out of it? Join me at 7pm, Monday to Thursdays, on Farage, here on GB News. We will have open, rational debate. We've got to work out how Britain moves forward from this. Join us here on GB News, the people's channel. Britain is watching. You've probably seen politicians interviewed a thousand times, but we do it differently. We find out who they really are, we don't shout, we chat, and hopefully we bring a bit of light, not just heat. Did you All know Kate Moss? Apparently. <laughs> uh, <laughs> do you have a pair of jeans or a pair of jeans? <laughs> no. no, of course I don't. What would I do with them? My friends are like, oh my God, what's she doing now? Join me every Sunday at six for Gloria Meets, only on GB News, the People's Channel, Britain's news channel. I'm Jacob Rees-Mogg, the Member of Parliament for North East Somerset and a former Government Minister. For years I've walked the corridors of power in both Westminster and the City of London. We need to have the arguments, the discussions on how we make it better. Crop failures, famine, war, <laughs> suffering on a scale completely <laughs> unimaginable. We are putting the cart before the horse. As Charles I said at the scaffold, he was the true defender of liberty. Yeah, I've completely derailed the conversation. <laughs> Join me Monday to Thursday at 8pm on GB News, Britain's news channel. I'm Mark White. As GB News Home and Security Editor, I cover those key issues that are so important to you. Our authorities, our communities doing all they can to combat violent crime. With the public services under unbearable strain, why are we still failing to control our borders? Defence, the first priority of any government, has been continually hollowed out. Can we trust our politicians to protect the armed forces? Join me, Mark White, on GB News. And let's return to tomorrow's news site now in our media buzz and more front pages have just been delivered. The Eye reports that the UK faces 5% interest rates after failing to tame inflation, which remains stubborn at 10.1%. In a blow to millions of Brits, this is very bad news for Rishi Sunak and Jeremy Hunt, by the way, as well, who by this point had predicted that inflation would be in the single digits. They have, of course, promised to halve it by the end of the year. The Daily Telegraph leads on the revelation that Russian spy ships may threaten Britain's critical infrastructure after details were released by Downing Street showing that covert ghost vessels were mapping wind farms and key communications cables off the UK's coast. According to the paper, MPs are calling for an expansion of the UK's armed forces to deter any possible sabotage. My superstar panel back with me now, political commentator Dominique Samuels, the businessman and activist Adam Brooks, and the former Labour Party advisor Matthew Laza. And breaking tonight, Rishi Sunak will toughen his illegal migration bill to avoid a right-wing Tory rebellion. That's according to insiders. The Prime Minister's bill is set to return to the Commons next week, and Tory rebels have urged Sunak to harden up powers to crack down on illegal crossings. A group of backbenchers, including... These are great folk, aren't they? Danny Kruger, Sir John Hayes, Miriam Cates and Jonathan Gullis. They actually had a showdown with Sunak over breakfast at Downing Street yesterday, demanding that ministers were given the power to ignore European Convention on Human Rights rulings preventing flights taking off to Rwanda. And that's something I've been calling for for months. So, Adam, look, the problem is uh, he Sunak shouldn't be doing this mm. to appeal to a particular base in the Conservative Party. 
he should be doing this because he's promised the nation he's going to stop the boats. This is the only way for him yeah. to even get close to he stopping should, the he boats. He should be doing this for public safety. Again, yeah. you know, we've ignored the ECHR before yes. on prisoner voting. Yes. Explain, explain that, because that's a very important point. Basically, yep. the ECHR they said wanted that the prisoners yep. should all have the vote, and we just said, bugger off. Yeah, so we can do it. And other countries ignore them on, on certain things as well. We can do this. So we need to toughen our borders. We need to stop what is a national emergency. I can't stress enough that we have got tens of thousands of unknown, undocumented men in this country. We cannot... We cannot allow this to keep happening. And if it does, we've got a serious problem. And I think communities are going to start erupting, you know, when the hot weather comes in the summer. You know, mothers, fathers, they're going to be out protesting because they are worried about their children. So we can do this. And he needs to do it for the right reason, not just because some in his party are causing a stink. You know, we need a prime minister that needs to address a national emergency that what we have got. And it needs to stop. Yeah, I mean, Dominique, look, this is the age-old argument, isn't it? But the issue that you've got with Sunak is he is fundamentally a globalist and so he doesn't want to upset the international community and he knows that leaving the ECHR would make the UK a prior state. Now, I don't give a damn. You know, Australia stopped the boats because they didn't have the ECHR hanging over them. Mm -hmm. So Ala Braverman doesn't give a damn. But Sunak cares about how he's thought on the global stage. Yeah, he I cares think, about his globalist mates. I think in terms of sort of just political news and just political common sense, I think that if you are going to do something as forthright as ignoring ECHR rulings um, on illegal migration by sending um, illegal migrants to Rwanda, which he's committed to doing, then it does need to be tempered with some form of compromise. And that's why I think that the MPs on the leftward side of the party, you know, you need left and right in the party um, in order to sort of balance things out. That's why I agree that um, the Prime Minister should commit to an annual um, target of refugees that we accept via safe routes that are genuine refugees because you know, some of the people that are coming over from the channel, yes, in recent years, it's been Albania, people from Albania most of the time, you know, there's no... But the thing is, we've taken people there. from Ukraine, for example, we've taken people from Afghanistan, yeah. we've recently taken tens of thousands from Hong Kong as well. The issue is, is that the folk in the small boats are already in a safe country, they're already in France. Yeah. They're actually not at the top of the list but of the, the issue... people that we should be helping because they're in a safe country. Yeah, but the issue is, is that you just have to look at the way things are. The way things are is that they're coming here anyway and there's no real way to stop them because nobody is stopping them. And with um, Afghanistan, I agree about Hong Kong and Ukraine, but um, I did see some particular figures that showed that, you know, about 10 or 12 uh, applications were accepted for the Afghanistan, Afghanistan scheme. And as a result, we actually saw an uptick of people from Afghanistan coming over from across the channel. So I think there is potential for a balance. That being said, yes, we do need to crack down and get tough yeah. on it, but we also need to be politically... Yeah. Although the vast majority of people are staying anyway. I mean, Matthew Laza, look, even from a liberal point of view, a lefty point of view, you're not kicking up a stink about the fact that prisoners don't have the vote, that, you know, uh, murderers aren't allowed to pick our next prime minister. So why the heck can't we ignore the ECHR on illegal migrants too? Well, I actually made a documentary about the ECHR. It wasn't oh, a rating goody. triumph, I have to tell you. <laughs> I can imagine. <laughs> but, and, 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 and uh, you know, I met the guy who, uh, who the prisoner who wanted, wanted to get the vote. The ECHR is a Tory invention. Uh, it was invented, uh, the, the guy who basically wrote the constitution was uh, Churchill's home secretary in, in Churchill government. I know, I get that. And so it would be shameful to leave. And no, it's, it wouldn't. It's Times have changed. It's a distraction. We need to stop the boats, and this government needs to stop okay. putting out smoke okay. screens. Given you've just action. invoked Winston Churchill, because I know this is what the left always do. They throw it back in our face. They say, oh, your hero Churchill came up with the ECHR. Oh, Margaret Thatcher, I'm sorry. You. <laughs> do, do, you, do you genuinely believe if Churchill was our Prime Minister, that he would be allowing this illegal invasion of our country via the southern border? 
Absolutely not. No, I don't, but I don't think the ECHR is responsible for it. The people who are responsible for not stopping the small boats crisis is so-called superstar Suella, who has failed. Pretty Patel failed. 98% of, of, the, of, of the illegal yeah, cases last year failed? have not been processed because they, have have not they put, failed? because they haven't put the system in place. Germany no, sent back do 48... do not have a proper deterrent. Germany sent 48,000 people back to the previous safe countries you've just mentioned yeah, But look at what year. happened. We have a process 2%. Yeah, but the point is, we have to smash... Um, which is disgrace, I'm not disagreeing with that. But the thing is, a deterrent only mm. works if it's real. And we saw how the boats were literally stopped overnight in Australia. And the reason they were stopped overnight in Australia is because there was a strong deterrent. And that deterrent was, if you come over illegally, you're going to end up in a terrible detention seeker in Nauru. And guess what? Within a year, the boats were literally stopped. So the point is, of course, we've got to do better on send back. Mm. But what we actually need is a genuine deterrent where illegal immigrants know that even if they land, uh, via a small boat across the channel. They are not staying here and they're never going to come back here. And by the way, it's the humane thing to do. The, the too, ultimate Matthew, deterrent is... Because it also stops turn around, it, it, it's, killing it's, people. It's turning people around. We do need to stop the small boats. And uh, this government's failed to do it and that a Labour government will tackle the small okay. boats ah. crisis. I think a Labour government will uh, just throw our borders open, if I'm completely honest. But look, now, get your tissues ready because this next story is a real tearjerker. Animal Rising's Army of the Unwashed have paused their campaign of eco-terror to release some pathetic, poor me, propaganda. Look at these tofu-scoffing champagne socialists fishing for sympathy because their illegal actions had consequences. There seemed to be a general lack of care across the entire police force. He just poleaxed me, flattened me to the ground, hit me on this side, and that fractured my collarbone. There was no warning given at all by the police officer. They didn't care. They didn't care what my condition was. I was grabbed from behind by a security guard who put their arm around my neck and choked me unconscious. I was screaming in pain and telling them that my hands were glued together and to the jump, but one officer was just encouraging the others to keep on pulling. I was tackled by a police officer and another individual and another police officer in front of the fence struck my hands. I tried to explain several times that I was choking. Finally, the response was that as long as I could talk, then clearly I was OK. My family saw a press photo of me surrounded by more than six police officers shortly after I'd regained consciousness. You could clearly tell from the photo that I was in significant pain and discomfort and my family didn't hear from me then for more than 24 hours whilst I was kept by the police. Has anyone got a violin? I don't give a damn, mate. Good on the police for finally getting tough on the eco-terrorists. Just what I demanded at the top of the show. We need to see more of that, actually. Uh, Matthew Laza, Adam Brooks, Dominic Samuels, do stand by, because coming up, we pay tribute to one of Britain's last surviving D-Day heroes, as I crown tonight's greatest Britain and Union jackass. But next, in Uncancelled, as the BBC's well-known wildlife presenter Chris Packham asks his 600,000 Twitter followers to join him at this weekend's divisive and deranged demo outside Parliament. Is he making a fresh mockery of the Beebs' impartiality? Comedy kingpin and former BBC Jim Davidson. He joins me live next. Plus, he's also, also going to reveal who he wants to star in the new woke reboot of Baywatch. You don't want to miss this. Jim Davidson live in two minutes' time. First and foremost, I am a GB News fan, and I was before I was working here. Just love the fact that we're asking the questions that a lot of establishment media won't ask. With a bit of a twist, we not only want to inform you, but we want to keep you entertained. It's worth the drive because you get in and the team's all ready and waiting. They're itching to go. And it's a proper little family. GB News is the people's channel. It's the audience that makes the program sing. We're giving our viewers and our listeners a voice. I see the thousands of your letters, tweets, emails, you name it, coming in. Britain is broken. How on earth did we get into this mess? But more importantly, how do we get out of it? The establishment had their chance. Now we're here to represent you. It's time for something different. It's time for GB News. I'm very patriotic. I believe in Britain. Our best days lie ahead. Britain's watching. Britain's watching. Join us here on GB News. The People's Channel. Britain's News Channel. 
Monday to Thursday, 9pm till 11pm, join me, Dan Wooten. I'll bring you the sharpest takes and hottest debates. Do you okay. believe in prisons? I, I don't believe in prisons. I'm completely right. stunned. I guarantee you there'll be no spin, no bias, no censorship. I actually was personally quite offended by it. <laughs> and no reason to go to bed. So I guess they've always been quite woke. That's Dan Wooten tonight on TV, radio and online. Monday to Thursday from 9pm till 11pm on GB News. The People's Channel. Britain's News Channel. I'm Simon Evans. Join me on GB News for Headliners at 11pm. What's the scoop? I'll be joined by two of the country's top like, comedians. Yes, yeah, right. As we take a look at tomorrow's newspapers tonight. We're going to get into trouble. If it's a big story, we'll be covering it. Spill some tea on him. There we go. <laughs> but we'll also have some fun. I wouldn't stick up a bank. <laughs> My father didn't love me. So anyway. Headliners every night from 11 on GB News. The People's Channel. Britain's News Channel. It's time for Uncancelled. And this is where Britain's top commentators speak out on controversial issues without the fear of the cancel culture sweeping the rest of the media. And the British bashing corporation has faced a series of accusations of being the biased broadcasting corporation in recent times with Gary Lineker's outspoken rants on illegal migration dragging the beeb into bother just weeks ago. And the pattern seems to be repeating with wildlife presenter Chris Packham, the latest household name, to throw impartiality out the window by brazenly urging his 600,000 Twitter followers to join the Great Unwashed at the Extinction Rebellion's latest unhinged and damaging demonstration outside Parliament this weekend. Watch. It's the big one. Yes, it's the big one that we've all been waiting for. We can change the world to make it a better place. I'm going to be there on the 22nd. It's Biodiversity Earth Day. Chipping in on that account. I hope to see you. It's really important at this time that we all recognise that we all have a role to play in making sure that our planet has a safe and secure and healthy future. So please come along to the big one. I think I'll pass, mate. But joining me tonight to run over the nuttiest news of the week, comedy legend uh, himself, a former BBC star. The BBC was very different in those days. Uh, Jim Davidson... So look, Jim, I, I don't think Packham uh, should be sacked. I don't think you think he should be sacked either. But you have to admit, no. I mean, it's just a left wing activist organisation now, right? Can't they just admit it? Well, it, it does stand for bring back communism, doesn't it, really? And we <laughs> yes. all pay for it. Do you think Do you think they care about ratings? Do you think that how good is our programme? They don't care. What's he called? Come and join me with the big one. Well, he sounds like a big one. And, you know, all these activists are starting to get on my nerves. I've cleaned that up a little bit. And, and you know, if, if you had a look me at too. all them poor, sobbing people that were at the Grand National, they all look alike, don't they? They all yeah. sort of look like Jeremy Corbyn clones that have gone wrong. And you never mind for <laughs> trying to protect animals. They look as if they should eat a few. They all look like they're real skinny little wretches. Dreadful people. Yeah. Well, the vegans, aren't they? The BBC. We've got to get rid of the BBC. I, mm. I actually paid my licence the other day and I went to confession afterwards and broke down and had a mental breakdown. But it's only fear of being nicked. Um, but I, I just think it's silly. Dan, imagine what TV show me and you could make, what TV station, never mind Ustream or, or GB News. With that BBC money, we could I rule know. the world, mate. I know, and they don't deserve the money. Couldn't agree more. Uh, but look, on to TV that normal people watch. Uh, it's been revealed that a remake of the cult 90s show Baywatch could be in the works. I'm mm. excited about yep. this. But apparently the issue, Jim, is that in the woke new world, uh, the showrunners actually want to cast plus-sized actors and sort of woke yes. trans characters and things like that. But Julie Birchall in The Sun has pleaded with producers to cast fitties, not fatties. Uh, so, Jim, what would be your choice for a relaunched Baywatch? Well, I don't think you could now have them old red Volkswagen Beetle bonnet suits uh, running along and, uh, and, and those beautiful girls, because it doesn't reflect what, uh, what real life is about. We should have some big-boned girls from Essex. You know the ones you see normally at Ladies' Day at Anfield, cocking their legs up? Well, there's always the pictures in the paper of 
revellers in Leeds or Newcastle, these size 22 girls trying to squeeze into a size 16 frock. You know, this is what we want. With that, Gemma Collins, she could be the new She's Pamela beautiful. Anderson. She's she? got amazing It's a widescreen TV now. You'd get them all in. And, of course, who's going to play the Hoff? It's you, Dan boy. Oh, my goodness. I can see you Imagine in a pair in of red speedos. speedos. There. Them old oh. budgie smugglers running along the beach with it all bouncing. Oh, I mean, the top of the ratings. You're giving folk nightmares, Jim, to be totally honest. <laughs> I, <laughs> now look. I, I know. I had a slight little tick myself. Uh, no, don't. No one envisage that, please. Uh, look, Jim, Nadine Dorries, former Culture Secretary. This is very significant, actually. She's launched uh, a new Daily Mail column this week. It was very good. But she slammed ITV's fading star, Philip Schofield, for his, quote, intimidating behaviour on the set of this morning. So, Jim, uh, why do ITV insist on sticking with this repulsive, reviled bloke rather than replacing him with the far more popular and certainly less horrible Alison Hammond? Yeah, Alison Hammond and, uh, and that other lady with the blonde hair and when, when you dye those yeah. black root bits. In. I, I think those two are fantastic. Yeah. Schofield, he just waits for his altar cue to come up, doesn't he? Sits there, not listening to anybody. I fell out with him a little bit. Uh, but, but having said that, I don't think he should be sacked because of, of what he is coming out, whether he was, you know, rotten no. to his wife and, and was deceiving people. And, and he certainly shouldn't be punished for the sins of his brother. However, he should be punished for being a crap entertainer. Would yeah. you employ him, Dan? Absolutely not. And he's awful. He, Look, he's really horrible. Why did you he, fall out with him, Jim? He's worse than Andrew Doyle. <laughs> no one's worse than Andrew Doyle. Joking. I we love, love the man. Andrew Doyle. Uh, me he too. Could be in Bay. What? He could be stuck <laughs> down the front of your speedo. I wonder if he's on headliners today. Uh, Jim, why did you fall out with Scoff? Well, it was when I fell out with that dreadful man on uh, I was in that Hell's Kitchen and they edited it to make me look as if it oh, was all yes, homophobic. Oh, yes, I remember that, he, yeah. Yeah, and, and so Philip said, oh, hello, thanks for coming on, fantastic, good to see you, Jim, wonderful. OK, three, two, one, go. And he turned on me. He put that oh. sort of face on. He had the face look at me and really steamed into me. The writing was on the wall there, Dan. Oh, I wish we could interview Schofield, Jim. That would be fun. Uh, but look, I want to go stateside now, cross over to America, where Disney, which has gone from being uh, the nicest company in the world to the wokest, has actually hit back yeah. at Florida Governor Ron DeSantis and his recent legislation that prohibits teachings about sexual orientation in Florida primary schools by announcing Mickey and Minnie will be dressed in rainbow-coloured pride outfits to celebrate LGBTQ plus culture and to stick a middle finger up to their local mm. governor. Uh, so, Jim, why are Disney so desperate to prove themselves as the wokest corporation? Well, you know, being in the streaming uh, business myself, and Disney have now got the streaming channel, and when you have a streaming channel, you have to feed the monster. It eats up material. They are hemorrhaging, hemorrhaging people signing up to them. So they've got to really try and rebrand themselves. Now, Mickey Mouse and Minnie Mouse, I never liked that Minnie Mouse. She had awful shoes and skinny legs. I mean, seriously, she was like Esther Ranson going to a disco. But, but I just don't like them. I'd like to take Minnie and Mickey Mouse with their rainbow shirts and whatever they want to wear and stick them in an old Tom and Jerry. You remember when Tom and Jerry was yeah, funny yeah. before it went woke? And get that cat to eat them two mice. That would be it for me. Get rid of them. <laughs> I never found them funny at all. And so what, what's to happen with the rest of Disney? What happened to Zippity Doo Da? That, the Song of the South, that's gone. Go woke, go broke, Dan. People are getting sick of it now. Oh, they Mini are. Mini amount in a rainbow frock. What's going on? I know. They are. They're sick of it. Uh, Jim Davidson, uh, Britain's third greatest comedian. I've got to say that because obviously number one, Andrew Doyle. Number two, John Cleese. But you're number three. You're number three, OK? Jim Davidson. <laughs> but you're my number one. by Scott Caporo. We love him. <laughs> Jim Davidson. We will speak very soon. Thank you so much, Jim. Uh, but let's go now to reveal our greatest Britain in Union Jackass. The superstar panel returned. Dominique Samuels, who is your nominee for tonight's Greatest Britain? 
So in light of Extinction Rebellion and their madness, um, you can care about the environment without being absolutely mad. So mine is going to be to Dundregan Rewilding Centre, which is in Scotland, actually, which is also funny. And it's um, the world's first rewilding centre, so it protects natural habitats, restores them, um, and also protects animals that are vulnerable to um, extinction, basically, which is great. Adam Brooks, your nominee. My nomination is honoree tonight, and it's Caitlyn Jenner for calling out Joe Biden uh, for vetoing uh, the GOP bill that would have protected women's sports from biological men competing. Yeah, Caitlyn's been very strong on this. Matthew Laza, your nominee. Well, very, uh, not, not politics at all, but a fantastic hero. Joe Catini, one of the handful of British veterans of D-Day uh, whose uh, death was announced by his family today. And it puts, I think, everything else into perspective. A truly the greatest generation. Absolutely. And of course, Joe Catini is tonight's uh, greatest Britain, 100 years old. Well deserved. Fought on D-Day. Utterly incredible man. And I feel so sad that we are losing the wisdom and the knowledge of that generation who I think uh, taught, well, certainly taught me so much growing up. Real men, Dan. Absolutely. Uh, Dominique Samuels, your Union Jackass nominee. Mine is former Tory Prime Minister William Hague and his comments about the Women's Institute having to get over it um, and accept trans women. Um, I just think he sounds like a bloody misogynist, to be honest, and he should probably keep his opinions to himself. Yeah, of course, he was former Tory leader, wasn't he? Never quite... Oh, leader, that. sorry. Yeah. But, yeah. <laughs> Would have been a good PM, probably. Adam Brooks, your nominee? My nominees are the eco-protesters that are disrupting our lives, being hysterical, scaring and terrifying people. Uh, they need to just get in the bin, you know. Go away. <laughs> and Matthew Laza, your nominee? Is Hamza Useless, uh, mm -hmm. who's shown this week he's completely out of his depth and uh, that Scotland deserves better. I'm glad my nickname is catching on, actually. <laughs> it's the one I like. it is. But to be honest, I'm going to go full circle because I started the show railing against these eco-terrorists who are ruining our lives. And of course, they are tonight's Union Jackers. Adam, I noticed you called them eco-protesters. These guys are not protesters, mm. right? They are eco-terrorists. I will prove oh, it. being polite, Dan. No, good. Polite. But go and look at the definition. Anyone go and look at the definition. The 2000 terrorism act. If we started changing the language around these terrorists, I think then we'd finally see police Agreed. taking tougher action. Adam Brooks, Dominique Samuels, Matthew Larson, my brilliant superstar panel, thank you so much. I'm back again tomorrow night from 9pm. Headliners is up next. Wonder if Andrew Doyle's here. Good night. I joined GB News because I was sick and tired of not hearing my views being represented, not just mine, but so many people that I knew and spoke to. I just couldn't get my voice out there. I couldn't say anything. I couldn't do anything. Whatever the narrative was, I kind of had to follow it. GB News is there to provide a voice for those who have been ignored by the establishment media. We think different things. We've got a different style. GB News is here to be optimistic and positive about the future. It's real kind of dynamic and flowing with the audience very much at the heart of it like a big family. Here at GB News, we talk about the things that matter to you. Hearing the voices from right across our towns and cities, especially our towns. All sides of the argument represented with a heavy dose of opinion. We're on a mission here to make a difference. And the GB News family really is here for you And whatever time of day you can watch or listen. Britain's watching. Britain's watching. We're proud to be GB News. The People's Channel. Britain's News Channel. Monday to Thursday, 9 p.m. till 11 p.m. Join me, Dan Wooten. I'll bring you the sharpest takes and hottest debates. Do you okay. believe in prisons? I, I don't believe in prisons. I'm completely right. stunned. I guarantee you there'll be no spin, no bias, no censorship. I actually was personally quite offended by it. <gasps> and no reason to go to bed. So I guess they've always been quite woke. That's Dan Wooten tonight on TV, radio and online. Monday to Thursday from 9 p.m. till 11 p.m. on GB News. The People's Channel. Britain's news channel. We are GB News, the people's channel. And right across the United Kingdom. You can find us on Sky Channel 512. Virgin Media Channel 604. Freesat Channel 216. Freeview Channel 236. And UView Channel 236.